Would you be the jerk for not wanting help in the kitchen and walking out anytime anybody tries to help you? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, am I the jerk for not letting my sister-in-law add my kids to the chore list? My sister-in-law lives in a fairly large six-bedroom farmhouse on 10 acres. We're building a home across the street, and in the meantime, we have a camper parked on sister-in-law's property. The only time we go into her house is to use the bathroom or shower. We have electricity in the camper, but no running water. The rest of the time, we're across the street building, and our kids, 14-year-old male, 12-year-old female, and 8-year-old male, are with us helping. We pay sister-in-law $180 a week to park our camper there, which is campground prices. Last afternoon yesterday, my sister-in-law asked us all to come inside to talk, and she pulls up her chore list with my kids' names added to it. Things like laundry, dishes, cleaning the living room, sweeping, mopping, cleaning the table and countertops, garbage, returnables, even helping cook meals, we don't eat with them, etc. She said, does this work for you? I won't let anyone clean the bathroom because I'm the only one who does it properly. I immediately said no. My kids don't even go in her house unless they're showering or pooing. So if anything, I'd make them clean the bathroom, not the rest of the house that they don't use. I'm not going to be making them do chores to that extent for simply using the bathroom. After they've been helping us all day with building our home, my sister-in-law who works all the time says, the kids are in here much more than that because all my snacks are gone and I always come home to a trashed house and I didn't before you guys started staying here. She's clearly not putting two and two together with the fact that her own daughter, 12, has had consistent friends over for the past two weeks since school let out and her husband, 46-year-old male, does nothing to parent, which I brought to her attention. My kids don't eat her food at all either. I've made it a point to preach to my kids about minimizing our footprint here for this specific reason, her trying to blame my kids for her trashed house. My husband is saying that maybe I should just allow her to add the kids to one or two chores a week to keep his sister at bay, but I've refused. We pay to be here and we do not go indoors at all unless it's for the bathroom, as I've stated. My kids are not going to be scrubbing her house top to bottom for using a restroom. And I've since told my husband we need to create an outhouse system on our property so we don't have to go in there at all. He says I'm making things more difficult when, in reality, I'm protecting my kids from being used. Am I the jerk? I definitely don't blame OP and I know if I were one of those kids growing up who wasn't going in there and wasn't messing around in that house, I wouldn't want to be the one having to do those chores for no reason. Especially like OP said, on top of helping build a home. I mean, these kids are probably tuckered and tired out at the end of the day. They probably don't have any time or focus to do more work. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy getting to decide whether or not all of these people are jerks, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for not wanting to play a game my girlfriend created? My, 27, girlfriend, 24, has been working on a visual novel game as a side project for almost two years and recently finished it. She wanted me to play it, but I initially declined since I'm not into visual novels or reading long stories. But after she begged, I gave it a try and played for a good 15 minutes. Now, I can tell she put in a lot of effort in the writing and the art and it was a good start, but I just got tired of reading and stopped. She asked what I thought and wanted me to eventually finish it and tell her what I thought about the choices and the endings, but I told her I had no plans to. She looked shocked and asked if it was boring. I told her, no, it's just that I'm not into this type of genre and she knows I'm not into reading, but asked to make an exception this time since she made it. I got upset because I think she's being childish and wants to blackmail me into doing something I don't want. After I made it clear I wasn't continuing, she hasn't talked to me. I already know that she's talented and smart, so just because I don't want to play it doesn't mean I don't support her. Some of my friends agree she's being immature, but others think I should be more supportive. So am I the jerk? I think OP is definitely being pretty dismissive. At the same time, it depends how long this game is. You would think though if you really cared about your girlfriend and you want to support their work and they're begging you to just help them out and give your opinions, that you could spare an hour every other day or whatever and actually work through it and give her some opinions. I guess the problem is OP doesn't really like those kinds of games anyways. 
Would OP's input be very valuable regardless? I mean, she's been working on this thing for two years, you can't lend some time to just play around with it? Our next story is, am I the jerk for yelling at my brother-in-law after he woke me up and told me to make dinner while we were staying at his house? I'm 39-year-old female, my husband Tom, 37-year-old male, and two sons, 12-year-old male, were recently in a house fire and lost our home, but luckily we were all out of the house when this happened. Tom's brother Sean, 40-year-old male, and his wife agreed to let us stay at his place with their kids while we sort out insurance. I don't like Sean as he believes in a traditional gender roles in the household. We've had issues since he realized I would keep my maiden name at work, which I informed him was none of his business and my personal choice. He works full time and his wife is a housewife. When we had our sons, Sean thought I would quit my job as a doctor and become a stay at home mom. However, Tom became a stay at home dad instead and then went back to work after our son went to school and doesn't share the same thought process as Sean. Sean clearly disapproves of this and me and vocalized his thoughts about the situation. I got Tom to speak to Sean and he's left us alone since, but occasionally used to make comments at holidays and birthdays about it, which I ignored. They stopped when Tom returned to work, and since then Tom says Sean has grown as a person. Tom and Sean are very close, and I would never tell him to stop talking to him, but I personally interact as less as possible with Sean. My son's school and Tom's workplace is walking distance from Sean's house, which is why I agreed to stay and suck it up while we get back on our feet as it is temporary. Yesterday was a very hectic day at work, and I was exhausted. My shift ended midday, and I went straight to bed. Everyone was out of the house. Sean and Tom went to work, the kids were at school, and Sean's wife went to see a friend. Sean got home first and woke me up. I was upset and still tired, and when I asked him why, he said I should make a start on dinner as it was getting late and his wife was out and not picking up her phone. Usually I do the cooking in the house with his wife, but I was upset that Sean had woken me up and yelled at him to not disturb me. I kicked him out of the room and told him I was going back to sleep and he could sort out his own dinner. When I woke up that evening, Sean told me that while I was under his house, I needed to respect his house rules. I told him that he could have cooked himself, he did leftovers in the fridge, or got takeaway. Tom thinks Sean did overstep by waking me up and making demands, but I shouldn't have yelled and escalated the situation. I don't think I'm the jerk, but I could have handled it slightly better maybe, but wanted to get someone else's perspective. So normally I kind of generally agree that while you're in somebody's house they do need to respect the person's house's rules. But to say that you have to do certain things in his house because you're a woman and only because you're a woman? Not cool. You're not obligated to wake up and cook for this man just because he's hungry. This next story is, am I the jerk for not watching my nieces and nephews at my house? I, male 32, have been with my girlfriend, female 29, for 8 years. From the very beginning we've been child free. My girlfriend isn't a big fan of kids, and while I love being the fun uncle, I love being able to give them back. Some background, my girlfriend is incredibly introverted and suffers from anxiety. Because of this, she's definitely a homebody and prefers hanging out at home with our two dogs. She likes things quiet and calm and definitely thinks of the house as her safe space. I completely respect that. I watch my two nephews and my niece, 7, 5, and 3, once in a while for my sister and brother-in-law. I always go over to their house to watch the kids partially because all their stuff and toys are there and it's just easier, and because I know my girlfriend wouldn't enjoy having them over at the house. Plus, she didn't agree to watch them, so I know that wouldn't be fair. We've had some really lovely weather lately, and my sister and brother-in-law have been asking me to take the kids over to my place to watch them instead. They live in a townhome and don't have much of a yard, while we are pretty lucky and have a pretty large backyard. I've offered to take the kids to the park instead if they want some outside time, Neither my sister or brother-in-law like this much. They say they would rather have the kids in a safer, fenced-in yard to run around and play than at a public park. It all came to a head this past weekend. My brother-in-law called and asked if I was available to watch the kids. I told him, sure, that wouldn't be a problem. He politely at first asked if he could drop the kids off with me for a change. I told him, no, I would come to them. He got a little frustrated and said the kids really needed some fresh air and to get their energy out. 
I said, okay, we can go to the park. He exploded at me and told me I was the jerk for never letting the kids come over. He said, never mind. He didn't want me to watch them because I was too selfish. Personally, I think OP is definitely not the jerk. Providing free babysitting services and doing so in a perfectly capable situation at their house should have been invaluable to these people. I don't know if it's the brother-in-law or OP's sister directly that's causing this toxic mindset of we need to get them over to their house, but they need to stop taking what OP does for granted. Our next story is, am I the jerk for calling my sister-in-law a medication queen and ultimately slamming her parenting? My sister-in-law is very much so the, if there's meds to help, take all of them type. This ranges from over-the-counter meds to narcotics. The type who tries giving you her prescribed tramadol if you say you have high anxiety that day and gets offended if you say no because she would never give you anything that would hurt you. I've gotten into it with her so many times because she thinks I'm ignorant for refusing to take meds if I don't need to. So, needless to say, she's had her kid heavily medicated since she was 5 for her ADHD. And if her kid so much as exhibits a single sign of energy, she's calling the doctor to up the dose because it's not working anymore. Now, since our son started school, he's been off the walls and getting into trouble for not sitting still and disrupting class. The school pushed for an evaluation, and we agreed to it no issue. But where it was so close to the end of the school year, the evaluation was never completed. We just pushed it out of our heads at this point because it's summer, and made the decision to have him evaluated a month or two prior to returning to school. So next year, he'll be all set to go with no issues. But where it is summer, our kids have been hanging out with sister-in-law's kids a lot, since the yard is conjoined. Sister-in-law has mentioned to me several times that I need to get my son medicated because he's too much of a handful and he needs help. Most of these comments are made following my son screaming through the yards while the kids are playing tag or when he randomly stops what he's doing to start dancing. He does stim a lot, so he squawks and randomly starts singing made-up songs, but it's in no ways being over-the-top disruptive for a midsummer afternoon. He's just playing. Well, sister-in-law came here yesterday and said she needed to express a tough love and basically flew off about how we weren't helping our kid because we refused to medicate him and help him regulate his emotions. I simply got up from the table and said, we are done here, you can leave. She kept pushing and she wasn't listening to my husband, who just kept telling her to mind her business. So I said, just because you're a medication queen who would rather see your kid doped up rather than handle her, does not mean we are those parents. Leave. My mother-in-law called and said I was a freaking runt for bashing my sister-in-law for doing right by her kid and is trying her best. So I generally agree with what OP said. I think going to medication for mood-based stuff is ultimately something you do at the extreme direction of a doctor and not something that you personally should push or look for. Although I do think that they're doing their kid a disservice by not going forward with that testing and evaluation. Like, although I understand and agree with what OP is saying, at the same time they're also kind of neglecting their kid. Our next story is, am I the jerk for introducing myself as my husband's friend to his family and forcing him to explain the truth while he's in the hospital? I married my husband four months ago. He's never introduced me to his family before because he said things were complicated with them and he didn't want them to ruin things between us. After we got married, he kept promising he would tell them, but he continued to put it off. The first time I met my in-laws was in the hospital after my husband was involved in a serious car accident. It was already a stressful situation, but I didn't know how to explain to them that he'd been lying to them and that he didn't invite them to his wedding, so I told them I was his friend. My husband was asleep at the time, but his best friend was there, and he wasn't shy about letting me know he thought it was my responsibility to tell them the truth, and I was throwing my husband under the bus. At that point, it would have been worse if I had told them the truth, and I felt it was something my husband should tell them himself. After my husband woke up, he had to tell them the truth since they repeatedly referred to me as his friend and knew he would be digging a bigger hole for both of us if he didn't correct them. He was mad I didn't at least say girlfriend so it would have made it easier for him to explain. 
His family were upset with both of us, but since he was hurt and I'm a stranger, I feel like they were mostly taking it out on me. My husband, to his credit, did try to defend me, but he's still mad over me saying I was his friend. Am I the jerk? You know, I really don't think OP's the jerk here. They went along with this thing for quite a while, understanding and trying to sympathize with their husband's situation. But realistically, this is a situation the husband created by being afraid to admit that they have a spouse. Our next story is, would I be the jerk for not inviting my parents or siblings to my wedding after what they said? My 25-year-old female, fiancé, 28-year-old male, and I are planning our dream wedding but want to keep it small. From the get-go, my fiancé and I both said that we do not want any children at our wedding due to a number of reasons. One, we want to get married in the bush somewhere where wild animals roam freely, and the age limit is 16 and up. This is non-negotiable because small children are at risk, venue requirements. Two, we both know from personal experiences that one person always ends up looking after the children and do not enjoy the wedding. 3. We want to have just adults at the wedding so that we can celebrate the day properly. My parents and siblings explicitly stated that my nieces and nephews will be required to go to the wedding and I have no choice in this matter. My dad even went as far as to say that if my nephew will not be allowed to go, he will then also not go. This broke my heart as I'm the only girl in the family and now he doesn't even want to attend. My brother said, I don't care what she wants, my children will be there. Take into consideration that all my nieces and nephews are under the age of 7. My fiancé's family have been super supportive and respects our wishes of not having any children at the wedding. They even made arrangements up until this point to have the little ones taken care of. Now I'm honestly considering not inviting my parents anymore because they're forcing me to do something that is not part of our wishes. I love them all dearly, but I feel they don't want to make the sacrifice for me and my fiancé's big day. As I ultimately mean, it's us getting married and not them. So, would I be the jerk for telling them that I will not be inviting them, as they want to rather spend the day with their grandchildren than celebrate the day with me? 100% not the jerk. First of all, even if there wasn't a venue requirement and a legitimate risk of these children being taken away by wild animals? You still would have been fine if you didn't want kids there. It's just sad that you feel like you have to consider hiring a bouncer at your wedding. Because it seems like some of these people want to try to disregard your rules and storm in there with a child anyways. This next story is, am I the jerk for leaving my sister in hospital while she had a stillbirth because I had to do my MCAT? My sister Mia and I are usually close, but this is really causing some issues. I didn't think I did anything wrong here. But now I don't even know and I'd like some third party insight. This happened in April. Also if anyone's curious, I'm 22 and she's 28. Mia had a high risk pregnancy, placenta previa and some other issues. She eventually had to get a c-section a week earlier than expected, but the baby was still born, which was terrible. I had my MCAT the day after Mia delivered, and she told me before that she wanted me to stay with her. We talked before they took her in, and she was a screaming, crying mess. I ended up leaving since I had my exam early morning, and I came back to the hospital as soon as I finished. I did hear the awful news that the baby was stillborn before the exam, but I didn't go then. So a few days pass, and Mia super pissed at me, saying I ditched her during the worst time of her life. I told her I was really sorry, but I had to do my MCAT. I know she's going through a really difficult time but she completely went off at me, saying I could have just done it another day and I thought some test was more important than her and her baby's life and that I deserved to fail. Mia's still saying I'm selfish and at the least, I could have just gone to the exam directly from the hospital and stayed with her the rest of the time. A lot of the extended family now know, and some are saying what I did was terrible. My mom agrees with me but is saying to just let Mia be because she went through a trauma. Honestly, I do think OP's mom has some pretty sage advice here. I think you do have to understand, she just went through some of the most traumatic stuff she's probably ever experienced, and will be dealing with that for quite some time, both physically and mentally and emotionally, and her lashing out is not indicative of her true feelings, and OP should just continue to try to be there for her, even if you have to put up with a barrage of stuff like that. That said though, stuff like the MCAT you can't reschedule, you can't put off. 
you had to make sure you do that for your education as well. Our next story is, am I the jerk for crashing Marg Monday? My coworkers usually do Margarita Monday every Monday. The same person usually posts in our group chat letting us know it's still going on. Last night, that person didn't post in the group chat, so I figured no one was interested that night. My partner and I decided to go anyways, since Margs are super cheap and we didn't have any dinner plans. After my partner and I got our drinks and ordered food, three of my coworkers walked in and sat with us. Through conversation, they told me that a former coworker of ours invited them out for Marg Monday for a smaller thing, as they're moving soon. One of my coworkers decided to post on the group chat, letting other people know that people were there and to come on out. Now, I don't know why, but the former coworker hates me. We used to get along great, and something suddenly changed to her hating me, always trying to get me in trouble and basically bullying me. The former coworker isn't exactly emotionally stable and acts very childish. Anyways, she came like 30 minutes later, and when she saw me, she freaked. She yelled, What the freak is he doing here? When one of my coworkers tried to explain what happened, my former coworker wouldn't hear it and stormed out. Former coworker later sent me a voice note saying how much of a crappy person I am for crashing her going away drinks and that I always ruin everything for her. She's now trying to spin this into me purposely showing up at the restaurant and purposely trying to ruin her evening. I should note that my coworkers came and sat by my partner and me. We would have totally have been fine sitting by ourselves. OP's definitely not the jerk. They didn't try to crash anything. They were there first. They didn't intend for any of this to happen. You can't be the jerk for something you literally did not do. This next story is, am I the jerk for kicking my brother-in-law out of my living room permanently? My sister-in-law, husband's sister, 29-year-old female, and her husband, 34-year-old male, rent out our basement currently. They have the entire basement to themselves. With the exception of my laundry area, they pay $450 a month to be here, and 9 out of 10 times, they eat their meals with us as well. They chip in very little to food cost, however. They ran into hard times and needed somewhere to go two months ago, and we opened our doors to them. Despite me being ready to pop, I had my daughter two weeks ago. Since they moved in, my sister-in-law will sleep all day, she works overnight shifts, and my brother-in-law will come upstairs to my living room around 5-6am to 6 a.m. and take over the entire space. He'll put TV on and then sit there with his laptop playing video games and will not leave that living room at all until 8 to 9 p.m. My sister-in-law even brings his food to him in the living room. The only time he gets up is to go to the bathroom or get himself coffee. Now, he's very much so a 50s-style southern boy. This man does not lift a finger at all and has never so much as boiled water because that's a woman's job. He doesn't pull that crap with me, but he does when it comes to my sister-in-law, who works all day when he's unemployed due to a back injury. Anyways, I breastfeed my daughter, and I refuse to be limited on my own space, so I absolutely will go to the living room and nurse my child. I make sure I'm not exposed. Darn near every time I go to nurse, he'll be like, I don't want to see that crap, think southern hillbilly accent. Or when my husband gets home, he'll say, she trying to whip her boobies out of my face again. And I'm honestly so fed up and disgusted with him that I snapped and told him he's not welcome in my living room at all anymore. And he can sit his stupid butt down in the area his wife pays for. Sister-in-law is trying to get me to change his mind because they don't have a TV down there. And the plug-in doesn't reach his laptop. And sitting on the bed all day hurts his back. But I refuse. I don't care how much discomfort it causes him. He grosses me out and his face makes me want to vomit and he needs to stay away from me completely. My husband's on my side per usual, but it's causing issues for my sister-in-law because her husband's just a jerk in general. Am I the jerk? Definitely not the jerk and you can kind of usually get a sense of who is a jerk or who is overly judgmental by the people who get wildly uncomfortable when somebody breastfeeds especially if they're doing it in a way that is not exposed. This guy honestly sounds like a real piece of work, and I can't blame OP for not wanting to be around him. This next story is, am I the jerk for starting a fight with my wife over leftovers? I, 33-year-old male, kind of started a fight at my wife, 30-year-old female, over her wasting food. She and I had very different upbringings when it came to food. Her family had the disposable income to eat out multiple times per month, 
and her family would cook large meals, enough to feed an army basically, and when food entered leftover territory, the rule in their house was whoever gets to it first, gets to it. My family was much more money-minded, only eating out on special occasions and cooking just enough for one or two meals. Takeout was never shared, and if we had leftovers, it was equally distributed. Some would be surprised to learn this has caused a great deal of dispute in our marriage. My wife does the majority of the cooking, and she likes to order take-in a lot, as we both have demanding jobs. Over our 10-year relationship, she's learned to cook in much smaller helpings, as much of it would spoil. She's not good about eating leftovers, the smell of a lot of cold food makes her sick, so she tries to meal prep or cook just enough to cover two meals max, as she knows letting food spoil irks me. When we have leftovers, I always let her know when her portion is still in the fridge. Typically, she tells me to have it if I want it. She said before that if she were truly coming back for it, she'd write her name on it or tell me not to eat it as she was saving it for later. But to my recollection, she's never done that. I always tell her that the leftovers are hers so she can have them. And we go back and forth like that in several rounds. The other night, we had leftover Chinese takeout, her leftovers, I ate mine. She asked me what I wanted her to cook for dinner, and I reminded her that she has her leftovers. She said, oh yeah, hand it here. So I gave her the container, and I watched her dump it straight into the trash without looking at it. Wide-eyed, I asked her, what are you doing? She proceeds to inform me that she's come up with a new system. If she tells me three times that I can eat her leftovers, because she does not intend to come back for them, she will throw it out before it spoils. Apparently that was the fourth time I reminded her about the leftovers, so that triggered the disposal. I got quiet to process the fact that she made this decision without talking to me about it, and finally I said she could have told me she was going to throw it out, then I would have eaten it. She firmly thinks that the statute of limitations expired, as she told me three times I could have them, and she could do with them what she sees fit. I would have if I had known she'd toss them instead of conceding and eating them after understanding I truly didn't mind her eating them herself. I feel like she truly hasn't listened to or disregarded my feelings and upbringing with food. I told her, do you, and haven't really talked to her since. So am I the jerk? I really don't think it's that big of a deal from either side. And also, I think if she said, ah, go ahead, you can have it three times and you haven't had it, then it's more than fair game to just toss. I mean, how many times do they have to say, go ahead, eat it, before it becomes okay to just toss it? OP's trying to be so rigid in their way about this thing when their wife has made it pretty clear how they feel. This next story is, am I the jerk for walking out of the kitchen any time that my husband or his family try to help? I, female 32, married my husband, male 35, six years ago. I met him through a competitive soccer league. I played in university and he played semi-professional before he moved to North America. I've made an effort to learn how to cook meals from his country and have several cookbooks. He never complains and has praised my cooking often. We've cooked meals together for dinner parties and no complaints. I'm currently pregnant with our first child, and his mom and sister have come over to be here for the birth and help for a while. So the problem is that whenever I'm cooking, all three of them have started coming in and changing stuff around. It doesn't matter if I'm making something from their country or not. They've started coming in and saying stuff like, oh, that heat is too high or low for this meal, and they'll change it, or adding ingredients or things like that. When my mother-in-law or sister-in-law cook, they get all offended if I offer any suggestions. My husband says to leave them alone because they know what they're doing, but he won't give me the same courtesy. So, I've started walking away from the kitchen as soon as they change anything. I'll simply walk out and go onto the deck with a sweet tea and enjoy the sunshine until it's time to eat. Now they're complaining that I'm making them do all the cooking and just sitting there doing nothing. I said that it was their choice to help out with that meal and I appreciated their help. My husband says I'm being petty and vindictive, but I told him he said to let them help, so I am. I'm sitting on the deck right now watching them fight because when I walked out, they forgot about the roast and now it's dry as freak. I'm thinking I might go for a drive and grab a burger while I'm out. Am I the jerk? Definitely not the jerk. Even looking past the obvious hypocrisy here, OPs clearly express that they're not happy being treated the way they are and they're being disregarded and neglected. I wouldn't blame anybody in that situation for feeling the way OP does. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. 
Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy Am I the Jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.